top man. Um, we'll jump straight into it then. Uh, Devinder yeah. Power, do you want to start for the boxing voice? Cheers, Dan. Hi, Solomon. How are you? Okay? Yeah, doing all good, mate. Yourself? I'm good and good. Um, so, fight number two, Newcastle. You're fighting in a big footballing city. You come from a big footballing city in, in, the, in the Midlands. Um, be great to be fighting in front of fans again, Solomon, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Good to have the fans back. And for me, it's, it's my um, first one in front of the fans as a pro. My, my debut, there was no fans there. So, I'm excited, you know, hear a bit of a buzz now, yeah? Good stuff. And um, I've read in the, in the build-up to this fight as well, you've been sparring none other than Joe Joyce. How's that, what's that done for your experience working with a with a former Olympian and, and someone who's pressing on the world scene as well? Yeah, yeah. I've done a lot of rounds with Joyce over the, the years. Um, so it's all, always good to work with Joyce. Like you say, he's at the, that top end of the game now where he's looking for world titles and it's only going to bring me on. Good stuff. And, and you've also, you know, from, from everyone that knows, you, you sparred Joshua as well. You've had rounds with him in the bank as well. Um, What's your prediction on that fight when it does happen? The big one, yeah, Fury versus AJ. Um, what, what's your thoughts on that? I know, I know you, um, your team as well, um, S Jam and Sam. He's very close with with Fury as well, isn't he? So, yeah, I, I don't really know to be honest. <laughs> I have to wait and see. I'm 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 leaning towards Joshua to be honest, but um, it's it's one of those fights where you have to just wait and see what happens because it's a it's a once in a sort of lifetime sort of undisputed heavyweight championship fight, so anything can happen. Brilliant. And just very finally, what are we expecting for fight number two from yourself? Yeah, just another explosive performance, working on little things and just getting in there and just putting my all in there again and hopefully we're getting a good um, knockout this time. <laughs> good stuff, Dolly. Listen, all the best from the boxing voice, mate, and uh, good luck on Saturday night. Nice one, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers. Here we go to John Trethaway next, please. Thanks, Dan. How you doing, Solly? You all right? You all right, mate. Yeah, all good, all good. Yeah, good to see you. So how was your debut? You got to make your debut on a live um, Sky Sports card. I know you've been waiting quite a while. What was the experience like to actually have that fight on TV? Yeah, it was good. It was a bit more of a yeah relief to get the first one out of the way. Um, I, I wasn't too nervous, but it was good to just get the ball rolling now and really establish myself now. And, and now I can say, yeah, I'm, I'm a professional and I'm in the game now. Excellent. And I know um, we just mentioned about the crowd. There was no crowd. But how did that feel actually not having anyone there? Because even at amateur fights, there would have been a small crowd there. It must have felt quite weird, probably like a spa, no? Yeah, a little bit. Um, some of the tournaments for GB, there, were, there weren't many there. Uh, some of the, you know, when you go to a tournament, the first couple of fights, there's not many people there. So it didn't really phase me too much. It was a bit quiet, but um, I've been training hard for it. So I just had to focus on the jabbing in front of me fair play and we know you've got a fantastic amateur pedigree uh, we talked about that before do you think that will put you in good stead um come your career will it make you want to move up the levels quicker because of that great experience yeah no doubt you know that people that come from international amateur backgrounds whether that's for great britain or whatever country they're from they, they're usually a little bit ahead of the game than others that are not coming from the amateur experience so yeah, definitely. I'm looking to push on and not wait around too long at this sort of um, journeyman level. And how quickly do you think that will be? Is it like a case to get you out like every couple of months or even more? And or, or do we sort of like move you up the levels quicker because of that experience? Yeah, it's it's a bit down to my management and my trainers as well. They'll, they'll put things forward to me and, I, and I'll, I'll probably just take anything that they say, but I, I don't want to hang around too long. So in the next 12 months, I think we'll see significant progressions to um, bigger and better things. Good stuff. Someone else has just mentioned about you sparring Joshua and people like that. I've actually had the privilege of watching you spar live against uh, Triple D in the Peacock gym, and you did fantastic. That that was just before you tipped over, and I remember watching you thinking, I'm sure you're going to have a great professional career. What were your thoughts on Daniel's comeback at the weekend? Yeah, good solid comeback. You know he's, you know he's got that power, and he goes to show he hit him with a big right hand, and um, it's probably more of a confidence builder for him getting that one out of the way, and then looking to get himself back in the mix as well. Good stuff, mate. Well, look, all the best from Raps on TV. We look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers, nice one, mate. Cheers. Thanks, John. If we go to Joe from Seconds Out next week. Hi, Matt. How's it going? You're right. You're right, Joe. Yeah, sound. Yeah, good, good, good. So I know you just mentioned you want to get out there quite a lot, obviously, past the journeyman level as kind of as soon as possible. 
when do you think you can reach sort of the levels like five and oh, 10 and oh, how quickly do you want to move like by the end of the year or? Yeah, well, because I obviously my debut was halfway through the year. So we're looking at it at really 12 months from my, from my debut. Within those 12 months um, to 18 months, you want to be looking on the British level. Then mm-hmm. you want to be knocking on the door for British Championship 12 to 18 months, definitely. So that'll probably be like before I reach 10 and 0. And do you feel like you're kind of already ahead of the curve, being as that? I know John just mentioned you've sparred Dubois, you've sparred Joshua. Do you feel like you've kind of got a little bit of a head start in a way? Yeah, a bit. I'm, I'm confident in my ability that I, I can go all the way. So I, I know that it's just a matter of time before I get the experience because ability-wise and I'll you know, put the work in as well, but it's just about getting the experience to cross over to that level. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously the crowds are back. Do you think it's actually going to make a difference? Because a lot of people say, you know, they don't really take in the crowd. They don't listen to them. It's They're kind of focused. Do you feel like that's going to affect your performance at all? I can't say right now, to be honest. I just have to experience it for myself because um, it's, it's going to be a different one to my debut. So I can only tell you after I've experienced it sort of thing. <laughs> so we'll have to see then. Kind of like a second pro debut in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks for that. Nice one, mate. Thanks, Joe. If you go to Ames from Boxing News TV, please. Ames here from Boxing News TV. Pleasure to meet you, Solomon. How's life treating you? All good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad at all. Let's go back to your uh, first fight, your professional debut. Uh, yeah. Mladen Manev proved to be tough. I mean, in the heavyweight division, the knockouts seem more important uh, in that division more than any. Were you disappointed to not get the stoppage? A little bit. Obviously, I wanted to get the stoppage, but... You know, looking back, it's good to get the, the rounds in. I didn't force anything. I, I weren't looking for a knockout. Uh, I, I paced myself nicely. And like a, we're looking to become a 12-round fighter. So, mm. you know, say that was a couple more rounds, he would have definitely not made it through, you know, 10, 10 rounds of that. So um, it did a little bit disappointing, but it's, it's stuff to work on as well. But it was a good performance. Is that the attitude that comes in, that you're coming with to this fight with Alvaro Torreira? You're saying you don't look actively for the knockout. Is, is that the same thing going forward then? Um, slightly. When I say I don't look for the knockout, I, I do I do want the knockout, but I won't force the knockout sort of thing, you know, right. if not there. Like with Manev, it was different because he was just tucking up. So I would have had to, there was no openings, no counter punching. It was just me hitting gloves and hitting the top of his head and just hitting everything, so... I'd be lying if I say I didn't want to look for a knockout this weekend because I do want to go for a knockout, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I know you're from Birmingham, the 0121, as myself. Uh, you said that you're on a mission to become the city's first ever heavyweight champion. Uh, what would it mean to you to uh, complete that mission? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be, you know, massive, massive for me, massive for the city. It's, it'll be something, you know, historic, really. I'm a heavyweight champion from Birmingham and, We've got the the cities there. We're a massive city, and we've got the infrastructure. And hopefully, we can get the the Brummies behind me, and we can rally and get get to that level. Yeah, we just haven't had quite the the luck really with the history of boxing, but hopefully that will change uh, with you. Uh, have you been in Eddie's ear to you know as you progress through your career to kind of get shows or uh, more shows in Birmingham uh, happening? Yeah, yeah, I have, and Sam Jones has been onto it as well. We definitely want to build um some shows in Birmingham. We're hoping that maybe like next year we can get some shows going in Birmingham. You know, we've got the NEC, you've got the um, NIA, the arena, Genting Arena. So um, we're looking to definitely this next year uh, with myself building shows in Brooklyn. And just to take you back to your, uh, your your debut, was it good in a sense to make your debut in front of no fans? Because you don't have to think about selling tickets. You don't have to think about impressing anyone. You can just literally focus on your fight. Yeah, um, yeah, is that positive? We've got to look at the positives and everything. I, I was, like you say, I could focus on my opponent. I'm going to be focused anyway, but yeah, it took a little bit of, I don't, I don't know, I don't really know yet because I'll have to see after Saturday what a bit of fans does for me. Um, maybe I'll be saying, oh, I, said, I wish I would have had some more fans. It would have rallied me on, but yeah, it was good in a way that I could focus and there wasn't too much pressure in sort of your face. The, the TV cameras were there, but there's no physical pressure around you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And Solomon, where do you feel you fit right now and amongst the scene of the heavyweights emerging now in their career domestically? Where do you fit? Yeah, emerging the next 12 months, I, I see myself really at the top of the top of the bunch of the um, emerging talent. So I, I definitely see myself coming out on top and I've just got to prove that really. 
So with that, you being at the top of the bunch domestically, does, would that include in that 12-month period a fight for the British title? Are you looking to really kind of fast-track yourself? Yeah, 12 to eight, 18 months. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah, definitely want to be above British, British title level. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wish you all the best. Thank you, Solomon. Nice one, man. Appreciate it. No worries. Thanks, James. If you go to James Lockton next, please. Yeah, Solomon, how you doing? How you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, good, sir. I um, just want to sort of touch a little bit about S-Jam, go a bit, a bit further into that and just tell us a bit about how that all started. Obviously, they've got a few heavyweights now on their books, but obviously, yeah. the yourself and the guys over there, and how did it all begin and how's it going? Yeah, well, it started when I was still on the GB squad and just a few messages with Sam Jones back and forth and uh, we just spoke, yeah, no pressure, but he just said, when you're turning over, what you, what you're thinking, basically, and then, I said, yeah, I'm thinking of turning over next year or this was last year or after the Olympic cycle. And then we got back and forth, met up, and then we got ourselves working together and things in pro- progress then. And this is working nicely so far. Also, they're a fairly newly formed management company in boxing. What was it about them that stood out to yourself to say, yeah, that's a team to take me forward? Yeah, I, I like the fact that they don't have masses and masses of boxers. They're not spread thin. You know, there's a lot of focus on each and every... Um, fighter that they've got, you know, we've only got about 10 fighters or just just over 10. So, and you can see Sam Jones got the passion for each and every one of them. And and also with Joe Joyce, what he's done with Joe Joyce, he's got him great fights and got him in a great position now, um, world ranked and stuff like that. So it showed that he can go at all levels um, and, and still have a, a great impact. Absolutely. And last one from me, obviously this week we've seen a few of your old friends on Team GB qualify for the Olympics. I want to talk about uh, the two clocks, Fraser and Chevy Clark. Um, have you spoken to those guys? Are you still in touch with anyone on Team GB? And how proud are you, how are you for them? Yeah, I spoke to a couple of the lads and like you say, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's great to see because I've been working with them the last few years. That was my life in that same Olympic setup, and I decided to turn over and see them validate all that hard work by qualifying for the Olympics. And now they've got to go and get themselves a medal. I'm sure they'll be wanting that medal instead now the one the qualification won't be enough but I'll be very relieved to get that first um you know over the first hurdle. You mentioned you've been there, you've seen the hard work first and just for those who don't realise, don't see behind closed doors, just how much hard work is it? You know, especially for Fraser who's been there for a long time. Yeah, it's it, the no the, that G B box is like a, a factory of great boxes. It's it, you really do churn them out and it's really hard work you're there every week week in week out training three times a day traveling all around the world you you're on there you that's your family really the coaching team the boxers all the support staff so it's, it's a it's a real grind at gb to be honest to stick it out there a long long time is is really something what everything's deserved then that that comes of it Are you expecting those guys to after the olympics and obviously turn over to the pros and Start to come through as where you are now. Yeah, no doubt they'll they'll be looking. To, a lot of them are at that stage where this is their cycle to get the Olympic medal and turn over and start doing their their own thing. So I was hoping you know I got myself a little jump on a couple of them and the uh, pro scene, get myself a few fights on, under my belt first. But they'll all be um, coming through thick and fast as well. It's been mentioned a few times about being fast tracked and you're looking at you know British title level in 12 to 18 months time. With the standard of the amateur scene and Team GB at such a high level, do you feel that people coming through now and the standard's always going to get better and better? For example, debutants are always going to be fighting, potentially fighters with winning records now. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, I think the, the system's improving and as they keep uh, performing the GB squad, they get the funding, they get the backing and then they can keep keep pushing on the levels and you see a lot of pros this spa down Sheffield they go up to Sheffield a lot of pro world champions they know any any given day they can go there and they've got two or three guys that are top quality that they can spar and give quality sparring uh, any day of the week so like you say they're all, it's always improving the system there and, and producing good boxers well, that's it we can see from obviously Anthony Joshua has all these camps there we can see that takes testament to how good the facilities are yeah. so thanks for your time mate and best luck at weekend that's right, so I appreciate it Okay, and lastly, if we go to Carlos Toro, please. 
Hey, Solomon, thanks so much for taking time to talk to us. You know, uh, first of all, how much do you know of your next opponent? You know, Alvaro Torero, you know, he's been fighting for, you know, for almost a decade, I believe, almost 20 fights. So how much uh, film have you seen of him or how much do you know of him? Yeah, I've had a little look on YouTube and my coaches had a little look on YouTube, see what we can find. Um, so we're just really looking at little habits he might have, little certain technical things that he might do. So we've managed to look at a couple of fights on YouTube and get a little game plan together. You, know, you had your pro debut last month and you're back again on Saturday. You know, going back to that debut, what was kind of maybe the biggest takeaway from that experience? Maybe not necessarily from an in-ring perspective, but maybe have to maybe could be the the dealings you have to do as a pro compared, yeah. uh, you know, that you didn't have to do as an amateur. Yeah, like you said, the whole experience, just going through going through all those motions that you need to um, you know, you got your you got your flashy shorts on, you got your flashy gown on in comparison, you got a few cameras and lights in your face going to the ring. So all the, all those little things, but none of that really phases me to be honest. It's just another fight at the end of the day. But yeah, this this prepared me for those little um, extra things that come with the pro game. Lastly, you know, I know you said you wanted to stay active for the next 12, 18 months, really make that fast track up, uh, up to uh, up to the rankings. And, you know, I know Eddie Hearn has fight camp next July, uh, next month. Do you have you and your team sort of have discussions over maybe if you win on Saturday to maybe get on there as your next fight and get there as quickly as possible? Yeah, yeah. These these sort of things, yeah, we're discussing when to get ourselves out active and that fight comes to uh, definitely a possibility. So, yeah, we are looking at the next one as well. Thanks, Solomon. Best of luck on Saturday. Nice one, mate. Cheers. Okay, thanks for that, Sol. We'll see you up in Newcastle, mate. Take care. Nice one, nice one. Cheers. Cheers yeah.